The United Nations Refugee Agency has called on Israel to halt plans to forcibly return tens of thousands of migrants to Africa. Israel had previously stated that it would pay Africans living illegally in the country to leave, threatening jail terms if they were caught after the end of March. Now, the vast majority of those migrants are from Eritrea and Sudan, and while many say they fled war and persecution, Israel treats them as economic migrants. According to the UNHCR, around 27,000 Eritreans and around 8,000 Sudanese are living illegally in Israel. Well, earlier we spoke to Naeem Gina, the executive director of the Afro Middle East Center, a think tank based in Johannesburg, South Africa. And we sought to find out his views on the decision by Israel to forcibly send tens of thousands of migrants back to Africa. Well, it's, it's of course, a completely unjustified uh, position that, that Israel is taking, certainly unjustified in terms of uh, international law and its obligations to asylum seekers. Um, it's trying to, to palm these off back onto the continent uh, and not take any of this responsibility. It's also, in a sense, a, a reflection of the more general kind of um, um, ethnic and, 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 and racial position that the Israeli state takes, uh, certainly towards Palestinians, but also towards others, and particularly uh, we're seeing that, it's, uh, uh, that, that it affects quite substantially um, Africans and, and African migrants in particular. So um, up to uh, sometime last year, there were about 60,000 African asylum seekers that had arrived uh, in Israel. Uh, of those, only 500 were actually given asylum status. Um, about uh, 20,000 had been um, sent back over the past uh, months, and now there's about 35,000 that, that are left. Well, it's, it's certainly not justified under international law. Um, what they're trying to say is, is two things. One, that these are not asylum seekers, that they are um, so-called economic migrants, which is untrue because um, almost all of these people have been registered by the UNHCR as, as asylum seekers. Um, and, and because they're saying these are economic mi migrants, they then don't have an obligation uh, to them and they will ship them off. Um, but the, the kind of um, part of the reason uh, around this you see coming out in the terminology that is being used as well about these African migrants, um, which is terminology that is not used, for example, about European migrants, referring to them as infiltrators, etc. But more than that, that uh, shipping them off to, to or deporting them to third countries is not as, uh, as simple as it sounds. So um, uh, what we've seen with the other 20,000 that have similarly been sent off, uh, most of them to Uganda, but many of them also to Rwanda, that both of these receiving states get paid uh, per head that they receive. But uh, Israel prepares a set of documents for each of them and, and uh, makes it seem like it's, uh, uh, it's a legal deportation. Once these people arrive in their receiving states, they have no documentation. They end up actually being illegal in these countries. Um, and so they stuck with a, with a bigger problem of being, being illegal in third countries, not being able to find jobs, not being able to settle, etc. Most of these asylum seekers come from either Eritrea or Sudan, with a few from South Sudan, but mainly these two countries. Um, they have escaped, um, you know, serious problems in both of these countries. Most of the Sudanese are from Darfur, where there's been a kind of civil war going on for many years now. Um, both of these countries are not unhappy about uh, these, what they would regard as, as problematic people from their countries um, going off somewhere else. So the fact that they get dumped uh, in Rwanda or Uganda doesn't, doesn't faze them in the least. If they happen to, and some of them do, um, then from either Uganda or Rwanda find their way back home, um, illegally of course, because as I say, they don't have documentation, um, it's also not such a big deal for, for these countries. So I don't think that, that you're going to see any problems being created b uh, between uh, Uganda and Rwanda on the, on the one hand and the home countries of, of these on the other hand.